So what I was going to talk about today was um, escalating density training. Um, this is this particular modality has been around forever. Um, it was recently, I say recently, within the last 10 years or so, uh, popularized by Charles Staley, who is a strength and conditioning coach that kind of formalized it and put this out in the training program. Um, but essentially the tenets of it are old school. I mean, it goes, goes way, way back. The basis of this is to allow you to, um, it gives you a way to quantify some work capacity in a exercise or a couple of exercises or a giant set, ever how you want to, to structure this. I tend to do this in a superset fashion. I tend to do it with arms um, because I feel like I don't really like to do arm workouts per se. And if I am going to do an arm workout, I want to turn it more into an event that's challenging. Um, a little bit more than a standard bodybuilding bro buy and try thing. To me, that's boring. Um, it's just too pedestrian for me. So I like to turn it into more of a challenge. Um, now, what I do personally and what we're going to do for our clients are a little bit different. I'm going to put Leslie through a quick workout as if she were a client of mine. And I'm going to assume that Leslie came to me and said, bro, what about my arm workout? But Because we, I get this sometimes. You guys may not get it so much, but I get it sometimes. I haven't done my, we, ne we never do arms, right? It's kind of like the, uh, uh, where's my cardio stuff? So I can, and I can keep them at bay quite a bit by saying, well, you know, arms really aren't that important. We're getting arms, um, you know, doing uh, pulling motions, doing pushing motions. You know, you're in here for the big exercise bang for the buck movements. Um, but every now and again, you have to pacify them. And this is a very good way to pacify someone who wants to work directly on their arms. What I'm going to do with Leslie takes 10 minutes, um, and that's it. So it, it, it could be just one portion of your workout, throwing in every now and again, keeps everybody happy. They walk out with blown up arms. Everybody's happy. They enjoy it. It's fun. It's challenging, and you can quantify it in the way that I will kind of talk through as we go along. And I'll show you after we're all said and done what we do the next time out to increase the intensity a bit. So when we look at this, there's a couple factors that are that are givens, more or less. The time is a given. The time's in this instance going to be 10 minutes. Traditionally, EDT is usually 15 minutes. And the way I do it personally, I kind of keep it at 15 minutes. The way I do it in here, I drop the time to 10 minutes. And Leslie's going to perform a series of exercises. She's going to do a bicep curl and a tricep pull over slash tricep extension over here with the easy bar. She's going to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Her, her goal is to get as many reps as possible between these two exercises in a 10 minute period. The way we've set up these, uh, the loading right now, this is the first time I've gone through this with her, so I'm, we're just kind of shooting in the dark here. I asked her to pick a weight that she could probably do 12 to 15 times with each of these exercises. <clears throat> what we're going to do is I'm going to start her off by going 10 repetitions of the curl, 10 repetitions. So, so now she's using, she's not going to failure per se at each exercise yet. As we go through this and we go through this, she's going to start to fatigue. As she fatigues, I'm not going to have her do any grind out sets. I'm going to kind of tell her to keep one in the tank every time. So I don't want her to get stuck. I'm not going to necessarily give her any any cheat repetitions or anything like that. If she goes through this, obviously she's, she's going to start to fatigue. She's going to drop from 10 repetitions. She might drop to 9, 8, 7, and she'll go right on down. But what I want to keep her away from is any serious grinded out repetitions. And again, I'll go over this as we, as we go through this. Um, when I get done with the whole thing, what I'll do is I'll count up how many repetitions she's done with each exercise. And the next time we go through, I'll kind of make a judgment call. Can I get more, and I'm using work in a general term here. Um, essentially, the distance that she's moving this weight per exercise is fixed, as far as we're concerned. Just meatballing it out here. The distance she's moving the load is fixed. The time is fixed. 
So the two variables we're working with is total repetitions and load on the bar. So I can make a judgment call after I see what she does through this round. What am I going to do next time to force her work output up higher? Can I get more reps out of her at the same weight? Or can I increase the weight a little bit and keep the reps the same or increase? When it gets dicey is if I increase the weight on a certain exercise and her repetitions go down. Now we've got, that's where the calculations come in. I'll, I'll go over that when we get done. I know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now. We'll hear in just a bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have Leslie start with bicep curls. Okay. Now the way I do this for my clients is I just keep a whiteboard ready. I tell them when the bar moves, I hit the clock. And I just follow them back and forth. I'll, I'll uh, spot them a little bit if need be. <clears throat> but mostly, I'm just yammering at them. So what we want is controlled repetitions. We don't want anything real jerky. We don't want, uh, how can I say this? We want clean repetitions. Okay. okay. And what I'm going to try to get you to do is start off at 10 and immediately go over here 10, right back here 10, 10. And oh, we're okay, trying to we're mitigate ten. fatigue just a little bit. Okay. okay. And I'll talk you through this. But as soon as the bar moves, we're on our way. Oh. And that would be, that yep. would be my, my go. Got and it. then bam, right back up. Keep right on going. Two more, and then go ahead and set it down. You'll come right over here. Tricep extensions. Bam, here we go. Inside grip. So it's a pullover into a tricep extension. Good. Don't worry about touching the floor. Right, right about there. Bam. Right back up. Six. Seven. And it starts off really easy. About the third time through, it really starts to fatigue me. This is 10 here, good. Right there, good. Right back to bicep curl. You go, and I'll catch up with you. Down. You don't have to do this with just arms. You can do it any, you can use machines. I've done it at Westlake using machines like a pullover and a press, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Triceps under contraction doesn't really give them a break. Good. Excellent. That's ten. That was nine. Nine. Right. Okay. This is another one. My bad. Can't count and talk at the same time. <laughs> Keep right on rolling. Set that down. 
Right about now, our arms are starting to smoke just a bit. going to drop her to nine repetitions here next time. Set that down. Maybe not in here. Five minutes in. Get up here, stay solid. The core nice and tight. Good, hang on. Bang, bang, up. Set that down. Probably eight here this time. You driving lighter? Yeah. Careful. Drive right here, up, good, one more, one more, one more, solid, here we go, that's it, good job, right on going. Try to hit 10 again, you're still solid here. Minute and a half. 
right near the end. It's the last minute. So what I'm going to try to do is have her get a little bit more tricep work. And then I'm going to have her go over there about the last 30 seconds and try to finish up with biceps. Especially for guys. Like I say, you're going to have guys come in and want to do direct arm work. This is quick and dirty. It's fun. Also, whenever they bring it up again, now you have a way to quantify this. And I'll show you that in just a second, how to quantify it. Um, but they enjoy it. Um, they like it if your arm's feeling okay. You just my forearm. This <laughs> is smoked. Yeah. I think it's just yeah. residual. Um, and I like it too. I mean, it's... Uh, I don't particularly like working arms. I will do them every now and again, especially when it's nasty outside and I would rather be running, sprinting, but it gives me something to do. Um, okay, so let's talk about how to quantify this real quick. So, let's see Okay, so just real quick and dirty. This is a bastardized work equation. doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a number that I can work with. All right. So the question I ask myself is, how can I make that work output higher. There's a couple ways I can do it. Number one, I can try to force her to do more repetitions. If you noticed in the bicep curl, I don't know that I'm going to be able to get more repetitions out of her because of time constraints. If you look at that, she was pretty much 10, 10, 10, 10. Okay, she pretty much stayed at 10. The only thing that slowed her down was time constraint. And she pretty much moved exercise to exercise pretty fast. So, let's say she would have been, uh, the, the metabolic conditioning was holding her back. I would say, well, let's keep the repetitions the same and try to, try to force her through exercise to exercise quicker. That's one way that I could bump this number up. Because in effect, I would get more repetitions out of her. She pretty much went exercise to exercise. That wasn't a problem. So if I was looking at this and I wanted to get this number higher, what I would do is go ahead and say, jump this up five pounds. So I'd put her at 40 pounds here the next time we go through. 
and I try to keep her repetition count the same. And I would try to force her to move exercise to exercise the same without very little break, just like she did here. When I go through this again, at 40 pounds, I add up the repetitions. Let's just say she kept the repetitions the same at 40 pounds, great. Her quote unquote work output just went up. Fantastic. Eventually I'm going to hit a point where I keep going up, keep going up. Let's say we hit 50 pounds at some point. That number is going to drop. Now I've got now I've got to figure out, did my going up in weight cause this total number to drop? If it did, I need to go back where I was before and try to get more repetition. This is a play you get, and you're really not going to get to that point till four or five iterations down the road. That's when you start kind of playing that against itself. So. Looking at so these. You're looking for a number of repetitions that you want. So it's rep So <laughs> actually, it's this what I call work output. It's not really work, but it's the closest definition I have to it. Given these numbers here. Um, I want that number as high as possible. I can either do that by increasing repetitions, but I don't think I can get you to do more repetitions because, I mean, you're pretty much, you're on time. Bam, bam, bam. You're knocking out rep after rep after rep, and you're moving exercise to exercise. Fat. I don't think I can get more repetitions out of you. I do think you probably could have handled 40 pounds, 5 pound increase, and done pretty close to the same thing. Pretty close. That would have made that number go higher. I see. If it didn't, if I pushed you to 40 pounds and this number didn't go higher because your repetitions started going down, then I would have to back up and try to get you to do more repetitions. Okay. So it's either it's repetitions is what in weight is what you're playing to try to get that number as high as you can push it. So let's look at the tricep extension, the pullover extension. She started bottoming out here, right? Started fatiguing, bottoming out. If I were to drop this next time to 30 pounds, such that she can keep that repetition higher, that repetition higher, maybe this one here higher as well, I may be able to push this number higher. So if I were guessing next time, what I would do is I would come in, I would have her lead in 40 pounds here, 30 pounds here. We'll give it another shot and see what happens. We'll see what happens to this number and this number. 